Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar and this is the first course on Samasa. We begin the lecture with the recitation of the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Charikarti Baribharti Sanjari Harti Leelaya Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Charikarti Baribharti Sanjari Harti Leelaya So far we have seen the theoretical background of the process of compounding. We have studied several related aspects, right from the significance of the term samasa and what it denotes and how it applies to the overall process of compounding up to the sequence in which the samasa gets derived. What is the input and what is the output? It is the sentence which is the input and the pratipadika which is the output. When we say the sentence is the input, what we mean is that the padas as part of the sentence they are the inputs and what is derived is a pratipadika which becomes an input for another sentence or the same sentence. From now on, we shall be studying and we shall be focusing on the Tatpurusha Samasa and we shall be devoting this entire course from here onwards in trying to understand the features, the details, the derivation procedure of the Tatpurusha Samasa as stated in the Paninian grammar. Tatpurusha Samasa is extremely important in Sanskrit and elsewhere as well. We have already seen that in Sanskrit there are four types of samasas Avyayi Bhava, Tatpurusha, Bahuvrihi and Dvandva. Amongst these four we will be focusing on Tatpurusha and we shall be dealing with the other three types namely Avyayi Bhava, Bahuvrihi and Dvandva in the second part of such a course in future. The Tatpurusha Samasa can be shown in the form of an equation in this particular manner, where you have x and y, two constituents, they are joined together and you get x, y as the newly generated compounded output, one unit. X and Y are two different units, independent units, separate units marked with square brackets to each one of them. But when they are compounded by the procedures laid down in the grammar of Panini, you will get X, Y as one unit, two square brackets for both of them together. So x, y is one unit and y is highlighted, made bold primarily to indicate that 
in the Tatpurusha compound by default Y that is the second member of the compound or the Uttarapada of the compound assumes the position of the head semantically and also otherwise. That is why this is a simple equation x plus y and you get x y y is the head. This is the Tatpurusha compound equation. Now where all the Tatpurusha Samasa is treated in the Ashtadhyayi, the core of the Paninian grammar and the grammatical tradition. So the Samasa Vidhayaka Sutra, namely the compound prescribing sutras for the Tatpurusha Samasa are stated in 2.1. 2.1.21 is Tatpurushaha and this continues up to 2.2.22 Khtva Ch. 2.2.23 is Shesho Bahuvrihihi. And what this means is that from 2.2.23 onwards, the Bahuvrihi Samasa is explained. So from 2.1.21 up to 2.2.22, we have the sutras prescribing the Tatpurusha Samasa. These are approximately 70 sutras omitting a few which are the technical terms. Then the Samasanta Pratyaya Vidhayaka Sutra, the sutras which prescribe the suffix to be added at the end of the Samasa. They are stated from 5486 onwards up to 54105 almost 20 sutras and finally the Swara Vidhayaka Sutras they are stated from 6 to 1 to 6 to 104 and also from 6 to 1 to 3 up to 6 to 137. So this is how the Tatpurusha Samasa is treated in the Ashtadhyayi and there are some other sutras scattered here and there in the Ashtadhyayi and they will be mentioned and studied in the course of the study of these main sutras. We shall be focusing primarily on the Samasa Vidhayaka sutras and we shall be dealing with the selective sutras from the Samasanta section as well as the Swara section in this particular course. What are the features of the Tatpurusha Samasa? Tatpurusha Samasa can be said to be treated in Paninian grammar with the biggest basket of sutras. The Avyai Bhava Samasa is treated in 2.1 up to 2.120 starting with Avyai Bhavaha that is 215. Almost 15 sutras for Avyayi Bhava. For Dvandva, there is only one sutra, Charthe Dvandvaha, 2229. And for Pahuvrihi, you have from 2223 up to 2228, six sutras. And compare that with the Tatpurusha Samasa, where you have almost 70 sutras prescribing the Tatpurusha Samasa, we can easily say that this is the biggest basket of sutras dealing with the Tatpurusha Samasa. And the reason why we have this biggest basket is also because there are variety of subtypes of Tatpurusha available. We shall study them in a while. By default, Uttarapada and its meaning are the head. Prayana Uttarapadartha Pradhanaha Tatpurushaha. Also, by default, the final vowel of the compound is accented. 
दीज आर सम ऑफ द फीचर्स ऑफ द तत्पुरुष समास हियर आर द टाइप्स ऑफ तत्पुरुष समास विभक्ति तत्पुरुष कर्मधारय कर्मधारय इज नेवर मेन्शनड एज कर्मधारय तत्पुरुष कर्मधारय इज मेन्शनड एज कर्मधारय बट इट इज पार्ट ऑफ तत्पुरुष अम्ब्रेला इन फैक्ट पाणिनी डिफाइन्स कर्मधारय एज तत्पुरुष सामनाधिकरण कर्मधारय सिमिलरली द्विगु इज ऑलसो नेवर मेन्शन एज द्विगु तत्पुरुष बट दैट इज जस्ट अ कन्वेन्शन द्विगु इज मेन्शन इन द अष्टाध्यायी अंडर द अधिकार तत्पुरुष संख्यापूर्वो द्विगु दैट इज हाउ द्विगु इज डिफाइंड नय तत्पुरुष प्रादि तत्पुरुष गति तत्पुरुष एंड उपपद तत्पुरुष and we shall be studying sutras which describe and prescribe all these types of tatpurusha samasa first we shall focus on the vibhakti tatpurusha and we note that there are these types of vibhakti tatpurusha stated in this particular order in the ashtadhyayi in 2.1 first comes dvitiya vibhakti tatpurusha then tritiya vibhakti tatpurusha then chaturthi vibhakti tatpurusha then panchami vibhakti tatpurusha then strangely enough saptami vibhakti tatpurusha comes in in the ashtadhyayi and finally it is shashti vibhakti tatpurusha which is treated so why shashti vibhakti tatpurusha is stated at the end missing the or obvious order 6 should come after 5 this is not the case 6 comes after 7 and there is some reason which we shall study when we study these different subtypes in detail let us now focus on the vibhakti tatpurusha and the first one is the dvitiya vibhakti tatpurusha let us study the sutras which state the dvitiya vibhakti tatpurusha there are these sutras 2124 to 29 which primarily deal with the dvitiya vibhakti tatpurusha we sh- shall not be dealing with each and every sutra because there are a couple of sutras which are not relevant to the dvitiya vibhakti tatpurusha we shall be omitting them first the sutra is this द्वितीया श्रितातीत पतितगतात्यस्त प्राप्तापन्नैः द्वितीया श्रितातीत पतितगतात्यस्त प्राप्तापन्नैः एज वी सी देयर आर टू पदर्स ओवर हियर फर्स्ट वन इज द्वितीया एंड दिस वर्ड द्वितीया हैपेंस टू बी इन द प्रथमा विभक्ति एकवचन एंड देयरफॉर प्रथमा निर्दिष्टम समासोपसर्जनम अप्लाइज and the word in the dvitiya vibhakti is termed as upasarjana and therefore upasarjanam purvam applies and there is a purva nipata of the dvitiyanta word this is followed by the second word in the sutra shritatit patitagatatyasta prapta pannaihi this is the instrumental plural 3 3 and there are these constituents of this big compound shrita atita patita gata atyasta prapta and apanna words continued in the sutra are sup from 212 sahasupa from 214 samartha pada vidhi from 211 and so the meaning of the sutra is the following dvitiya sup shrita divihi subhihi samarthaihi samasyate this is the meaning what it means is the pada ending in dvitiya vibhakti sup is compounded with interrelated sups whose pratipadika is shrita etc and the compound thus formed is termed tatpurusha 
रिपीट द पद एंडिंग इन द्वितीया द्वितीया सुप इज कंपाउंडेड विद द इंटर रिलेटेड सुप्स समर्थ एंड सुप सह सुपा हुज प्रातिपदिक इज श्रित श्रिता विभि श्रितातीत एट्सेट्रा एंड द कंपाउंड दस फॉर्म इज टर्म तत्पुरुष सो द नमन क्लिचर द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द तत्पुरुष स्टेटेड बाय दिस पर्टिक्युलर सूत्र इज द फॉलोइंग सो वी हैव दिस सुबंध फॉलोड बाय दिस अदर सुबंध एंड देन दिस हैज टू बी द्वितीय एंड दिस हैज टू बी श्रित एंड देन ऑब्वियसली द सुप इज ड्रॉप्ड एंड वॉट यू गेट इज द प्रातिपदिक इन द फर्स्ट सुबंध एंड श्रित विच इज द सेकेंड प्रातिपदिक इन द सेकेंड सुबंध this would be the output of the derived compound so here is an example first let us look at the formation of the words shrita atita etc and what their meaning is the word shrita is derived from the verbal root shri to reside and ta stands for the karta atita is derived from the verbal root e with the preverb ati and the suffix ta now this verbal root e is put in curly brackets primarily because this e has got interrelations with both the preverb and the suffix it is ati e which means to go beyond to go past and e and t is interrelated because of the internal structure so this complexity is captured because of these brackets patita has got the verbal root pata and the suffix t gata has the verbal root gama and the suffix t atyasta has the verbal root as with the preverb ati and also the suffix t once again the root as is put in the curly brackets primarily to show the interrelation it has with ati as well as t similar is the case with prapta and apanna prapta is derived from pra plus ap with the suffix t added to it and apanna is derived from the verbal root pada with the preverb a with the suffix t added to it shrita means one who decided atita means one who went past patita means one who fell gata means one who went atyasta means one who set prapta means one who reached apanna means one who arrived in all these forms meanings of the are karta so meaning of the interrelated subanta has to be such that it is related to the action denoted by these verbal roots as karma since it is not denoted by the this is the structural and theoretical application of the karaka theory now dvitiya vibhakti will be used to denote the karma and so if we have this particular meaning to be conveyed one who resided in the hardship so we'll have kashtam shritaha kashtam shritaha so here we have kashtam which has got kashta and am and shrita plus su this is the alaukika vigraha kashtam shritaha is the laukika vigraha now we note that this am indicates the interrelation of kashta with the action denoted by the verbal root shri as karma so kashta is related to the action denoted by shri through this am this is how the interrelation has taken place and then there is samarthya and now we are going to start the process of compounding this is the alaukika vigraha so 
this gets the samasa saudhnya and after that obviously we apply supodhatu pratipadika yoho and delete am as well as su and we get kashta and shrita and when we join them together we get kashta shrita so kashta shrita is one output and kashtam shritaha is the laukika vigraha of kashta shrita so kashta shrita is one pada whereas kashtam shritaha were two padas kashta shrita conveys one meaning whereas kashtam shritaha were two meanings and also there will be one accent on kashta shrita whereas kashtam and shritaha will have two accents similarly we will have kantaram atitaha and this will be processed and we'll get the final output kantara tita and then there will be sub added and we get kantara titaha similarly narakam patitaha is the input and naraka patita is the output of compounding and naraka patitaha is the prathama ekavachana this is how it will be used in the sentence gramam gataha will be the input and gramagata will be the compound gramagataha is the prathama ekavachana turang tarangan atyastaha is the input and tarangatyastha would be the output and tarangatyastaha would be the prathama ekavachana sukham praptaha is the input and sukha prapta is the output sukha praptaha would be the prathama ekavachana dukham apanna is the input and dukha panna is the output compound and dukha panna is the prathama ekavachana of the pratipadika dukha panna the process of derivation of all these compounds would be the same as that of kashtam shritaha and the semantic relation would also be the same this is how the first sutra in the dvitiya vibhakti tatpurusha generates these compound outputs now we proceed to the next sutra namely khatva kshepe this is 2126 here there are two padas khatva and kshepe khatva means bed now because this is in the prathama vibhakti this becomes upasarjana because of prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam and because of the upasarjana saudnya upasarjanam purvam applies and this will occupy the initial position of the samasa so there will be purva nipata kshepe is seven one of kshepa that is censure in the sense of censure now censure is conveyed by the compound words continued are sup sahasupa as well as ktena from 2125 samarthapada vidhi is always there and so the meaning of the sutra is the following the word khatva when ends in dvitiya gets compounded with interrelated subanta word whose pratipadika ends in khata suffix when censure is to be conveyed by the overall compound so here we have khatva the word khatva with the dvitiya vibhakti this is one subanta followed by another pratipadika at the end of which there is kt and this is followed by su and so these subs get get deleted and you get the form khatva and the second pratipadika with kt suffix at the end will be the part of the output so let us look at the derivation meaning is one who is stationed in the bed 
when one is supposed to study. That means one is careless, one is lazy and so on. One is not studying. So, khatvam arudhaha. This is the laukika vigraha. And we'll have khatva plus am plus arudha plus su. This is the alaukika vigraha. This is where the compounding starts. Now, this gets the term samasa and then it gets the term pratipadika and then we have this su and am getting deleted. But before that, we first confirm that this word arudha is ktanta. That means it has got the suffix ta at the end. So we have a plus ruha plus ta. So it is confirmed now that the word arudha indeed is ending in the suffix ta. So the conditions of the sutra apply. So we then apply the sutras. First of all, Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho and delete both the sus. And now we have Khatva Arudha. Then the Sandhi rule applies. And finally we get the output Khatva Rudha. That is the output Khatva Rudha. Khatva Rudha and Khatva Marudha, they both convey one and the same meaning. So we ensure that there is Samartha principle applying and followed over here. Now the censure, that is kshepa meaning, is not conveyed by the sentence. When you say khatva marudhaha, one who is sleeping, there is no censure that is available in the sentence itself. The censure is conveyed only through a compound. This is the purpose of doing the compound over here. And that is why this is considered as a nitya samasa, with a vigraha as the feature. So this compound output will denote anybody who is going astray. Not just the one who is sleeping, but anybody who is doing anything else but study and obviously going astray. Vimarga prasthanasya upalaksharam, as the traditional commentators have put it nicely. Similarly, khatva plutaha will be another example where one who jumped in the bed also will denote the censure. That means one who is traveling on a wrong path, apatha prasthitaha, as the traditional commentators have rendered it. This is how kshepa is denoted by the compound, or rather compound is made in order to denote the kshepa. Now we have the next sutra, Kalaha. So there are there is only one word in the sutra, Kalaha, which is one slash three of Kala. Kala means time, that is words denoting time. Words continued are Sup, Sahasupa and Ktena. Samartha Padavidhi is obviously there. The meaning of the sutra is that the words denoting time when end in Dvitiya get compounded with interrelated subanta words whose pratipadika ends in the suffix. Repeat, words denoting time when end in dhitiya get compounded with interrelated subanta word whose pratipadika ends in the suffix. So we have here kala as the pratipadika followed by dhitiya plus this subanta in which there is kta at the end of the pratipadika and the output generated would be the term denoting kala and the pratipadika having kta at the end. Since kala appears in the first case, it becomes upasarjana and then it occupies the initial position of the compound. This is an example. The meaning to be conveyed is moon who has started measuring the month. So, masam pramitaha chandramaha. In pramitaha, the suffix the indicates one who does, that means an agent or the karta. And that is why it is co-referential with chandramaha, who is the karta of this action of measuring. So, we have the alaukika vigraha in this form, masa plus am, pramita plus su. 
Now we check whether this Pramita has got Kta at the end or not. And we find that indeed this word and its derivation gives us the information that there is the suffix at the end. Because Pramita is derived from the preverb pra plus the root ma followed by the suffix the. So this is a ktanta. So now this compound process begins and we note that this becomes a samasa saudnyaka and therefore pratipadika saudnyaka element and so supodhatu pratipadika yoha applies and deletes both the subantas, both the sups and so we have masa plus zero plus pramita plus zero and finally we have masa pramita as the finally derived output. This is used in the sentence as masa pramitaha chandramaha. So masam pramitaha chandramaha is a sentence but masa pramitaha chandramaha this is also a sentence but one word is reduced and there is a process of compounding. Masa is related to the word pramita more specifically with the action denoted by the verbal root ma with the preverb pra. The next sutra is Atyanta Sanyogecha 2.129. Atyanta Sanyoge means in continuous association. Cha means and. The words continued are sup, sahasupa, also kalaha from 2.128. Samartha Padavihi is continued and the meaning of the sutra is and words denoting time when end in Dvitiya get compounded with interrelated Subantha word when continuous association of the time is denoted. So we have Kala plus Dvitiya plus any Pratipadika plus Su and the output generated is Kala plus that Pratipadika when the continuous association with time is denoted by the compound. For example, happiness continued to be associated for a period of one muhurta. If this is the meaning to be conveyed, we have laugika vigraha namely muhurtam sukham and then this is converted into an alaukika vigraha where the process of compounding begins. So we have muhurta plus am and sukha plus su Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoha applies and deletes the two subs. So we have Muhurta plus Sukha and finally we get Muhurta Sukha as the derived output. Here Sukha and Muhurta have got a continuous association. Muhurta indicates the time period and Sukha is associated with this time period in a continuous manner. That is what the compound indicates. To summarize, Dvitiya Vibhakti Tatpurusha takes place in specific conditions. One of the necessary conditions is that there should be a verbal root with a krit suffix and this verbal root and the word in Dvitiya are related as karma. There are special cases where only a compound denotes specific meanings and not a sentence like censure. Such compounds are termed Nitya Samasa with a Vigraha as their feature. Rest all are such that the meaning conveyed by the Samasa can also be conveyed by a sentence adhering to the basic principle of Samartha Padavidhihi 2.1.1. These are our references. Thank you for your patience.